Hey, it's Sick Boy from the Gaming Anarchist Collective, and welcome to the Anarchy Guide for the 12th of November 2013. Well, yesterday I reported that there were rumours flying around with regards to Sony saying that they were implementing in their terms of service in order to ban used games and sharing of games. Now, in my video yesterday, I made the point where I believe that is untrue and that it is something that Sony generally do. Before anyone says anything, I have been one of the very few people who was rallying the shit out of Sony when there was even a hint of DRM when that came out earlier in the year. Okay, so, so everybody's aware, there is no DRM in place to block used games. So, they have come out and said that they want to have no restrictions on that, they stand by that. Any wording in their terms of service does not actually contradict that policy. So, that's good news for everybody. Well, in quite a staggering own goal, Microsoft have admitted to have a 3D Blu-ray reading functionality on the Xbox One. So much for this being the living room's one entertainment system, because do you know what I use to play my 3D Blu-rays? My PlayStation 3 or my 3D Blu-ray player. Now, if I were to have an Xbox One in my living room and wanted to watch a film in 3D on my 3D TV, what have I got to do? Use another device. Jesus, Microsoft, I was playing Crisis 2 in 3D on the PS3 in 2011. What precisely the fuck were you thinking to not implement this tech? It's a simple thing. This isn't like a hardware technological issue. This is literally a matter of their firmware not being up to date enough. What were they thinking? This is a massively stupid thing to do. Now I know 3D is not the biggest hot be all and end all, but this is like the ability for it not to play CDs. It's dumb. You wanted a multimedia center, Microsoft. Make it a multimedia center. Jesus. Speaking of the Xbox One, an analyst at Robert W. Baird has looked at the offering of the Xbox One and considers it a highly strong contender to be the main multimedia hub in the living room, beating out the Apple TV and the Google TV, saying that it has better applications, it runs games, it has better tech, bloody bloody blah, it will, it will beat, it will be the best multimedia centre available at those standard sort of prices. So, from with regards to what Microsoft actually wanted, which was to take over the living room, which was to be the all-seeing eye cable box DVD player multimedia center, they have fully achieved what their actual goal is. Now, the next bit of news I'm gonna give you is gonna somewhat give people maybe somewhat of a wake-up call as to what the Xbox actually is. Now it kind of escaped your attention that there was a massively glaring omission from my previous story, and that would be the PlayStation 4. Now, the head of games analysis at Piers Harding Rolls has come out and said that they firmly predict the PlayStation 4 will outsell the Xbox One for at least the next four years comfortably. Holy shit! So, just so we can all be aware here, I'm not here about playing a pissing competition about who's going to win the next gen. What I am going to say is, clearly Microsoft have their niche. What they want to do is to be a cable box, be your multimedia centre. From with regards to a core gaming machine, it does seem very clear that the numbers are strongly towards that for core gamers, the PlayStation 4 appears to be a choice, appears to be the better selling product. Now, I don't know what data these analysts have come across. I don't know whether this is just random predictions based on trends. But if this holds true, this shows a fairly widening gap between gamers and between living room space entertainment centres. And I don't want this to cause any kind of argument because there's people on either side who love their machines, blah, blah, blah. How I still am massively sore about the way Microsoft have acted lately. So, hell if I'm supporting them anytime soon. But you need to consider, is this, people have been talking about how exciting it'll be to be able to watch football while you play a game on your Xbox One. I don't know any many gamers who really care about that. I don't see how that is a, to me, I don't want anything else going on when I'm playing my game. I'm immersed in the game. Who would be playing a competitive multiplayer game or playing an immersive story and have something in picture in picture playing at the same fucking time? 
that seems like an insane thing that you would only have if it is literally your kids are playing a game and the dad wants to just flick over and see the football scores. Or you're not actually, you're just doing it you know, for party games and the like. So it's somewhat just sort of showing that the Xbox is clearly marketed as a casuals family machine. Now that may sell huge amounts. However, it seems that the market is slinging towards the fact that the PlayStation 4 is the core gaming machine and more people are interested in a core gaming machine than they are a multimedia hub. Well, despite Microsoft bringing out Hideo Kojima at E3, it does appear that his still holds a preference for Sony machines. In a screenshot that I'll link in the description field, obviously all the stories are in the description field as per usual, but there is an image, a screenshot image showing Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, stating that there will be exclusive content for the PlayStation. This is why I get pissed off with places like things like E3, that they'll come out and they'll try and sell you something on the grounds that, oh, Kojima came out, it must be preferentially built for the Xbox One, when clearly he has a business preference or a personal preference with Sony, hence the exclusive content. When Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain eventually come out. Kojima has admitted that in order to make a prequel to Metal Gear Solid, now this title is coming after Metal Gear Solid 3 and prior to Metal Gear Solid 1, and they are going to have to put in some minor inconsistencies in the plotting, which is, let's face it, a hugely convoluted plot. I love the Metal Gear Solid plot, but my god, it's complex. So there will be inconsistencies. So just... Bear that in mind, because there's going to be an awful lot of, that's not true, Ocelot wasn't there in that year, or whatever the hell's going to be the inconsistency. But yeah, bear that in mind. The series has got so big and so convoluted that Kojima himself has admitted continuity is becoming a minor problem. Well, a bit of marvellous news for the consumers, but I can understand why this will cause some consternation within the industry. But Humble have started re-offering Steam keys to trade. Now, previously there was an issue where people were buying Humble bundles and they were then selling on the Steam keys. The point being is that you're not meant to sell on your Steam keys. But of course, for example, you buy a Humble bundle. Um, I, didn't, I haven't bought the Warner Brothers one because I didn't want to buy it only for two games and have a load of keys for games that I already have. So it was worthless to me to pay just a one dollar if I wanted to get Fear 3 because I've got every other game in that bundle. Well, I've got Fear 3 or War in the North. Every other game in that bundle I already have. So why would I buy the bundle? Now, of course, there is a genuine issue that people have been using it as a black market to sell games. And that is bullshit. Now, hopefully they will make sure that people will, you know, limit their purchases, perhaps. Perhaps use more information in order to verify accounts to make sure it's not being overly used. But I'm very glad from the consumer's perspective that we can now buy a bundle from Humble Bundle and we can have the individual Steam keys and we can either gift them through our Steam, give them to somebody else. Selling them is against the terms of service, but you can gift them to people or you can install it on Steam and play yourself. So I think that's good news all round. Hopefully people won't abuse it and just prove why they had to be cautious in the first place and kick us in the arse. Be responsible, don't be a greedy fucking prick and we can actually get what we want. Well, sticking with Humble, the Humble store now has a permanent storefront. It's not just the rolling Humble bundles. It will now permanently be selling games at a discounted rate. I am frankly, ecstatic to hear this news. It's great to see another up and coming website that has got a lot of traffic and a lot of notoriety take up and be a competitor for the likes of Green Man Gaming and GOG and Steam. It is great to see more players in the digital distribution service. It's good. It's good for the consumer. It's very good for the consumer. Competition breeds price cuts and without price cuts, digital games are not as worthwhile as their physical counterparts. They're just not. On the grounds that they're yours and they're yours forever. I've gone over this a million times and no doubt people keep asking me what the issue is and I'll just say the simple fact that you don't own a digital game, certainly if it has any kind of DRM on it. Obviously un-DRM games, you can do whatever you like with them, but any game say with Steam with a DRM there is a limitation there. So it's good to see companies certainly with like GOG is a big one to sell these DRM free games and pulling the prices down, keeping them down, it's good to see another company do the same and start selling games at a discounted price. This is good 
for everybody other than Gabe Newell. I'm sorry, you might lose a couple of dollars in your gold-plated mansion. I do apologise. Keep cutting those prices. Well, it's possible that console gamers' prayers may start to be answered with regards to the digital games. Now, as I mentioned in the previous story about the more competition there is, the lower the prices. Now, my problem of consoles going 100% digital, other than the collector issue, other than the non-resale issue, is the price issue. That is the biggest factor. Because right now, games on Xbox Live and on the PSN cost more than their physical equivalents, and that's fucking insane. Absolutely insane. The fact that you can't buy a new EA game for under £60 is mental to me. Uh, just quick conversion rate for anyone in the US. That's like nearly nine. That's like eighty-six, ninety dollars for FIFA. Yeah. So, fantastic news all round to say that Amazon is getting a storefront in the PSN. So, PlayStation consumers right now only in the US, and I'm hoping they roll this out globally. They will be selling digital games directly to you on your PSN from Amazon. This is fucking terrific news. The prices on these official storefronts are obscene. I genuinely hope to see this happen more and it again start to drive the prices down as prices are thrown things like Steam. Nobody really in their right mind buys a game full price on Steam. Nobody in their right mind should be buying digital full price games on consoles. Now if this becomes a thing and it actually becomes successful and it goes worldwide, this is genuinely the start of being able to say maybe digital console gaming has some validity. I will still stick with physical games. I still prefer to own it and to have it and to not be connected to an account. Say if the PSN shuts down, I couldn't play the game anymore. I am not interested in that. I want my games forever. So I will always be first and foremost a physical copy gamer, but I am not a Luddite in regards that I just hate progress for progress's sake. I would like to see if you can release, Amazon, if you can release AAA titles for Five to ten dollars less than the physical equivalent, you will start to get my attention. Now, until that day, not interested. But if you can offer me a significant discount and cut the price on some of these older games, because some of these older games, unless they're on the PS Plus sale, they're for free on PS Plus, the prices stay very high. And they become, uh, these games just don't sell. So hopefully you'll do some wild price slashing, as you often do with your physical copies. And that would be a very good thing for the digital consumer. And I hope that a similar thing gets to happen on the Xbox. Because live is as bad, if not worse, than the PSN. So hopefully we will see this happen. Hopefully we can start seeing consoles as more of an open source while they try and chase the PC business. Certainly more the PC model, not necessarily the PC sales, because the PC sales tend to lag behind the consoles. But... This is terrific news all around, and I hope they bring it outside of the US. Well, the Red Cross are continuing their campaign in order to have games incorporate rules that will penalise players for breaking humanitarian conventions. Yeah, that's actually a thing. There's actually a thing where someone in the, at least one, at least one human being who works in the Red Cross who should be working to save people's lives is looking to make sure that morality is an enforceable thing in video games and that anybody who steps outside of real, realistic bounds of humanitarianism and will commit something that would be no, known as a war crime should be penalised in game. That would mean that, for example, them having the rendition scene in Grand Theft Auto V would not be allowed because it would actually because there's no penalizing there you should somehow lose points for the plot including to talk about and show torture and then at the end of it to say that torture was pointless um how's that going to work with games like spec ops no spoilers here but let's just say the white phosphorus scene that shit would get you in the hague on a war crime that's kind of the point of the game and what are you going to how are you going to do that how are you going to penalise the player when the point of the game is to highlight something. Even in games like Call of Duty, other than pretty much no Russian, every mission in every Call of Duty, if you started shooting civilians, you lose the game. There are very few civilians in, in modern military shooters. 
And for the most part, there is a penalty, penalty for shooting them. Back to old light gun games. If a civilian popped up and you shot them, you'd lose health. That was a major part of the game. So these morality measure, measures are generally in there. But for you to bother opening your fucking mouth and bring that up is just stupid. Anyway, and the Japanese Red Cross have reiterated this. And a number by no means all, but some Japanese gamers were all in favour of this. I don't know whether it's because they don't have a military really anymore, but the hell? What in the hell is this about? There's some people going, oh, I think it would be really fun to have that. Well, there are games where you can't do anything like that. Why would you want to ensure that games have to follow a certain moral path? Sometimes moral ambiguity is a damn good thing and is important for good storytelling. Not always, but when it is and it's implemented well, it is a work of damn art. And you shouldn't be poking your goddamn nose into that and telling people that they must play games within moral confines. Because it's just fucking stupid. Now, I'm not going to rag on all Japanese gamers because that would just be completely hypocritical of me because I do not like bat doing the all for one. But those few people who said that, you're all complete and utter twats. By all means, never play a military game ever again. Don't play a game that has the torture. Don't buy Grand Theft Auto V that has a torture of a civilian. Don't play it. Don't play Spec Ops The Line. But don't tell other people that they must play a game to certain moral standards. It's fucking stupid because it is fiction. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. You're looking through the 2020 vision of the Anarchic Eye. I'll catch you guys later.